Ian, when you get things right, we have to get the trumpets out and <laughs> tell everyone about Keep it. Keep tooting. Yeah, I was just about <laughs> to say to you, you predicted Chelsea, Arsenal and Celtic and you were right on the money. Except I didn't, wasn't right on the money because I didn't put the bet on. <laughs> I cannot I'm believe you didn't I think do Tony it. Bart might have done. But at least he wasn't playing for any of the three. <laughs> well, I tell you, let's get into the meat and bones of it. It's it's the big story. Um, mm. Joey Barton, eighteen months, effectively ending his career. Is it too harsh? No, I don't believe it is, Peter. Um, I think a lot has been made uh, falsely of um, people saying, "Well, football, especially in England, depends on the betting industry." for uh, income, mostly uh, sponsorship and advertising, and every Premier League club has a betting partner. That's fine, but that's different from a player who knows the rules, betting on games, and then, you know, getting caught. And, and, you know, Joey Barton is someone who has been given a lot of second chances. A lot. And I think too many. And this time, he didn't make one mistake. He made 1,260 mistakes. Those are the amount of bets he put on, including one that his own team were playing in. He bet them to lose. Now, he wasn't playing personally, but his team were. He's at, he's got access to information in terms of the team and the, the motivation and the mood in the camp and everything else. Now, I'm sorry, those rules cannot be uh, bro- those rules cannot be brought into that kind of uh, spotlight of contention when. They are so black and white, and people can say that, 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 oh, well, it's not his fault because he's a gambling addiction and everything else. No, sorry. It's black and white, not grey. Mm-hmm. And in the FA's defence, they were not making a moral judgment on gambling in football. And, of course, they have got their own betting partner, as the SFA have with William Hill. They were making a simple enforcement of their own rules about the fact that Barton obviously had broken those rules. So I've got no sympathy for him. I think... Um, Anyone who does it should expect to feel the force of that same uh, enforcement of the, of, the, of the rules of football. And um, I think education with regards to younger players is important. But, um, as I said, as far as Barton's concerned, I think he must serve the punishment. OK, if we've seen the last of Joey Barton, um, have we seen the last of Zlatan Ibrahimovic? Mm-hmm. Well, an ACL, you know, the, the, the cruciate ligament, is a bad, bad injury. Um, obviously certainly won't play for Manchester United this season again. I think the problem for Zlatan now is, who is going to sign him when at 35 he has suffered such a serious injury? Because we've seen players much younger not come back from this. And of course, I think there was almost a, you know, it wasn't a joke, but there was a kind of like, you know, a bit of kind of, uh, let's just say banter, wasn't there, uh, uh, with Rangers in the 1990s when they suffered several ACLs and they used to go, all go off to California to see Dr. Richard Stedman. Funnily enough, that's exactly where Latin's gone as well. So, look, let's hope it, let's hope such a fantastic player recovers. But whether or not um, you know, it'll be Manchester United and whether or not it'll be Premier League again, I think that's very doubtful now. We've got a cracking match on Sunday. Top of the table, um, Chelsea are out in front. Tottenham are still hunting them down. And it's Tottenham against Arsenal. Arsene Wenger says there's not a power shift between the Gunners and the Spurs. What do you think? He's entitled to say that, Peter, because Spurs have yet to win the Premier League um, in the Premier League era. They've only won two titles, in fact, two top titles in in their history. And obviously under Wenger, Arsenal have won three Premier League titles alone, plus six FA Cups. So, but of course, there is a little bit of kind of, you know, smoke and mirrors there. I don't think anyone's under the impression that Spurs currently are not a stronger better organised, more entertaining and certainly a more competitive team than Arsenal are. <clears throat> I think Sunday's game will prove that point in the sense that Spurs will win and they will win well, uh, which will mean that Arsenal have got a real fight on their hands to remain in the top four. Again, the first time Wenger will ever finish outside the top four. Um, so uh, Wenger is entitled to his opinion, but I think his opinion is if, you know, if he's wearing the old red tinted spectacles if you like because um, no one in England certainly is talking about Arsenal in the same way as they're talking about Spurs two different, completely different teams OK, final point then um, Saturday, bottom of the table is where everybody is looking if I could get you to pick one game and tell me what's going to happen potentially to the team and possibly the manager 
Oh, I think Sunderland at home to Bournemouth, uh, Peter, is a huge day for uh, for David Moyes. Um, they've been poor all, all season, and I don't think anyone expects them to well do anything but go down. As far as Moyes is concerned, I've got a little bit of sympathy for him, but he's brought some of the problems upon himself uh, and not helped himself with certain things that have gone on off the pitch, never mind on it. Um, and I think, therefore, that some of them will go down. But at this moment in time, with the club trying to be so... The, the, man, the owner of the club's trying to sell Sunderland uh, to pay off a manager on a big contract will not look good on the balance books. So I think he might just decide to wait, uh, Ellis Short, that is, the, the owner, to um, see what happens. But again, remember, uh, the Premier League clubs, when they go down, they get a massive parachute payment in order to retain their contracts and remain uh, competitive when they go to the Championship. So um, this... Is, I think someone could receive up to £55 million in their first season. Now, that's more than the budgets of at least 14 of the Championship clubs already. So you're given a huge step up. And, of course, Newcastle have shown that that uh, step up allows you to retain players, to retain your um, power in the transfers in terms of uh, signing players to come in as well as uh, selling out. And uh, Newcastle comes straight back up again, the 21st club in the 26, 27 years of Premier League history who've come straight back up. So, Sunderland will can do the same. It's up to Ellis Shore or, or whoever the new owner is going to be. Well, David Moyes is the man to do that for them. OK, Ruffy and me are hanging on your every word. I've got to ask you, after last week's superb run of tipping, who's going to win? Ibrox, Rangers Celtic. It's round two, the last time they'll meet this season. Give us your prediction on the scoreline. I don't think Rangers could perform any worse than they did last week, Peter, at Hamden. Um, and I don't see Celtic letting up. I think Celtic will win by two goals. Come and join the football family at PLZ Soccer on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash PLZ Soccer. And you can download the app. Simply text download PLZ to 6446. Or you can download the app in the iTunes store.